Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the CX Show with me, James Talk Cycling. This evening I'm going to talk you through the latest rounds of the CX World Cup and the Super Prestige. Mariana Voss, Tom Pickup, Ellie Sabit and the return of Mathieu van der Poel next weekend in Courtois and Holst. The latest round of the Super Prestige took place in Merck's Plus on Saturday and the women's race saw Voss and Alvarado take a flyer from the start. Behind there was a lot of jostling behind. Lucinda Brand got caught up behind most of it while Denise Betsema pushed her way through past Clara Honsinger. Should never take up your hands off the bars, especially to push another rider out of the way. Denise Betsema, you should have been disqualified for that. But let's get back on to the racing. Um, by the end of the first lap, Mariana Voss had blown up. Um, I'll get on to more of that later. But she blew up and finished in 10th, while Alvarado pushed on solo. Denise Betsema and Inga van der Heiden were the battle for second and third. Brand, Backstead, Backer, Van Alpha. Um, Marriott Norbert Real Barola um, competed really for that sort of fourth to ninth spot in the race. Um, Alvarado took the win 18 seconds ahead of Betsema, who shouldn't be in the race, but she finished second. And Inga van der Heiden continued her good form with a fine third place. Ride of the day, though, for me was Zoe Backstead, the 18 year old finished fifth in probably her biggest result. Even though she's won an elite race, this is probably her biggest result. The men's race, the favourite going into it was Lauren Swake and he took it on pretty early. Eddie Eastabit, Michael Van Tornout were having a few issues. Uh, Lars van der Haar as well. Tom Pickup was having a few issues on his return as well, but looked pretty strong. Lauren Swake out in front and took the win so low, but only five seconds ahead of Lars van der Haar, while <coughs> Van Tornout took third place, 40 seconds down. Rider of the day for the men's race was Ryan Camp, again like Zoe, took fifth and was probably his best result in a well, in an elite men's cyclocross race. Pidcock on his return had a few silly mistakes on the course, a stupid crash as he normally does on the first race back and finishing seventh a minute 25 back so not too bad in the end. Just a few hours ago in fact. <coughs> the women's race was decided pretty much on the lap one. Puck Peterson got a gap and was never seen again gradually building her lead to win her first elite CX World Cup. She used her mountain bike background to get a gap on Finn Van Empel, who finished second at a minute three. Sharon Van Enroy was third, a minute and 36 back. These 20 year olds are really starting to show not only that they're the future of the sport, but they are the present of the sport as well. Brand had some issues, as we will see with Pidcock similarly in the first lap, uh, but she recovered very well to finish fourth. Um, ride of the day, Puck Peterson, first CX World Cup win at elite level and a dominant performance. The men's race, as I said, Tom Pickup had issues from the start. His chain got jammed, I think he was saying, so he went from second row to last by the first obstacle. Um, Eastabit and Van Swanel got off to a flying start while Pickcock picked his way beautifully through the field, getting on to Eastabit and Van Swanel and then <coughs> quickly dropping Eastabit. Thibaut Nace had a great race, Ron Haar as well, and Joris Nievenhaus continued his good form, but it was really the battle between Van Swanel and Pickcock for first and second, and Van der Haar and Swake for third and fourth. 
And it was really decided by the penultimate lap. Pipcock was getting a gap on Michael Van Torn out, and then he crashed. And that was pretty much where, where the race was lost for Pipcock. He did have a mistake on one of the draggy climbs where he just had the wrong gear for pretty much the whole race. Um, Van Tornout took the win, Pitcock second, only a couple of seconds back, and the battle for third was won by Lars van der Haar. Ride of the day for the men, Tom Pitcock, going from last to second, maybe could have won had he not crashed, but what a ride. On to the talking points of the week, ends racing now, and we'll kick things off with Ellie Isabet, who... As I said the other day, following an incredible start to the season where he wasn't off the podium for the first 10 races or so, since then and since his sort of war of words with Lauren Swake, he has finished third, second, DNF, fourth, fifth, fourth and seventh. Not bad, considering that he is still probably nursing an injury or nursing a bit of recovery from that injury. But for me, with Vanderpool coming back next week, pick up back, Van Aert back in a couple of weeks, if I was Elias, but I would only be thinking about the World Championships now and how to beat those three or two if Pickup doesn't do it. Um, I'll take a break now, fully make sure my back is healed if I was him. And then really hit it hard December through to the World Championships. He's still strong, but he's clearly missing that something. I'm going to talk to you now about the cannibal of women's racing, Mariana Voss. Um, she's the World Champion. She has had a fantastic season on the road. But I do think there are a few little question marks over her cyclocross form. She's 35 now. so. Her and Lucinda Brand are the two big riders over 30. Then you've got a huge gap to the likes of Van Empel, Alvarado, Puck Peterser, and even Zoe Backstead. She has had second, sixth, ninth, fifth, and tenth, but obviously Merck's Plash, she said herself that she blew up and caused her to miss the race on Sunday. Can she get the form back in time for the World Championships? I don't think so. I think her as a top, top elite cyclocross rider is potentially over. However, I do think she'll still continue to do well and be pretty dominant on the road. In the battle of the big three, we had the return of Tom Pidcock this weekend. And for me, he did pretty well. He improved on where he was last year, where in Bone, he finished 2 minutes 13 behind Wout Van Aert, and in Val de Soleil, so his second race back, he <coughs> finished on the podium, but again, it was a minute and a half down. This year, 2022, he finished a minute 25 back up in Merck's Place, and he finished three seconds back in Overizer. The form is there. He showed today that the technique is there. Now we just need to not make those silly mistakes that come in those first couple of races for him. For someone that normally starts off slowly, he's had a big jump up in form. Whether it's the power of Rainbow, quite possibly. Whether it's he's got to get hit the ground running before Van der Poel and Van Aert come back. I think a combination of the two, but he is certainly ready for this year's cyclocross season. So thank you if you've got this far. Uh, this weekend, we've got Cortrek, the X20 Bad Comes Trophy. We've got the World Cup from Holst and another return of the big three. Mathieu van der Poel returns certainly in Cortrek and I think in Holst as well. Wout van Aert, due to a cold, um, put it back a week. So soon we'll have the return of the big three. Um, the CX show will be a bit later next week. I am going to be there in Cortrick and in Holst. I'll have my camera and I'll do some little content videos for you on the day of Cortrick especially. 
Um, so, yep, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week for the latest episode of the CX Show.